So today I'm going to be giving you guys some tips for knife ability tests, which I think are somewhat helpful. So these are kind of my pro tips, quote unquote pro tips. Um, of course, by any means, I'm not a pro at knife ability tests. I'm kind of bad at the game. So take this video with a grain of salt, but I just wanted to give you guys some tips. I hope that at least some people might find something helpful within this video. So as always, of course, timestamps are in the description down below. And if you end up enjoying the video, consider subscribing and maybe giving the video a like if you enjoyed it, of course. And if you want to support me even further, so feel free to check out my UGC group, link is in the description down below, I make UGC items, and with all of that out of the way, sorry for the self promo, let's start the video. Alright, so there we go, we joined knife ability tests. Before we actually start playing the game, I kind of want to go over my settings in the game, so these may be somewhat helpful, I'm not entirely sure about that, so let's just reset really quickly with the slash die command. If you didn't know that, that's actually a thing in knife ability tests, can be kind of cool, just type in slash die and, well, you get basically just reset it. And you take 999 damage, as you can see. So this is one of the settings that I've personally enabled right here, display kill slash damage tickers. And as you can see right here, if we type this in, this is the damage ticker right there, which is at 999. So yeah, if you want to have that on, you can turn it on right here. The kill feed, of course, basically enables the kill feed in the top right corner. You will be able to see that one later on. First person view, it's really up to you. It's personal preference. Um, kill slash streak SFX right here. You don't really need that one. That one can be a bit distracting. So also personal preference streamer mode. I used to have on because of radios. That's no longer, I believe, a problem. So you don't really need that one. And incognito, I'm not entirely sure about that either. Height spectator counters, I guess. So if that's bothering you, the spectator counter, uh, you can turn it off apparently and disable effects you can turn off effects as an example so those are my settings now let's go over some of the items that i would personally end up buying if i started playing knife ability test and here's the kill feed by the way so first things first, of course, one of the weapons I would buy personally is the Tactical for 2000 gems. Very easy choice. The other weapons that are offered right here for 1000 and 1400 gems are not really worth it in my personal opinion. At least for a beginner, I would go for the Tactical. It seems like a lot, but it's a really fantastic weapon. It can shoot for walls, can shoot for multiple people, and it's just really useful to be honest. It can also scope, so if you're actually playing in first person, which I wouldn't recommend, you can scope in. Next up, of course, an ability which is going to be no scope for 1000 gems. Basically, one of my favorite abilities. Really fun to use. Most quote unquote pro players use it, and it's just really great. You can actually knife spam with this one as well. So, yeah, it's, it's really fun. I like it. And last but not least, of course, let's go over two gears that I would recommend buying, which is the money bag and, of course, the heart balloon. You might think um, a visc is kind of crazy recommending gear because they're basically useless, but these two are actually kind of useful. So, yeah, these are pretty nice. And that's basically it. So those are kind of the most important things. Um, if you want to buy other stuff, of course, that's really up to you. But those are definitely the four items I would personally buy if I started knife ability test. So like I've already mentioned, I personally wouldn't recommend you to play in first person because you have much more options in third person. As an example, if you try to peek around the corner in first person, you're kind of limited and you will have to peek around the corner like this. While in third person, you can already kind of see the enemy. So this is much more helpful and allows you to get people very easily. So this is definitely a benefit with third person. Next up, of course, let's go over knife spamming. So basically, this is something that is probably going to take you a while to get used to. It is something that we used to do in mad games. For everybody who doesn't know what mad games is, it was the game that a lot of the old knife ability test players played prior to knife ability tests because this was released in 2017. And believe it or not, some of us have played way before that. <laughs> including myself. So yeah, basically knife spamming works like this. You throw your knife, you unequip your knife, you re-equip it and throw it again. So this is basically how it works. And as you can see, it allows you to throw your knife relatively fast if I wouldn't mess it actually up. This can be very beneficial. And as you can see, and probably here, it is very loud. <laughs> That's my keyboard, I'm sorry. But yeah, um, this is basically knife spamming. So you just have to get the timing right. And then of course you can throw the knife a little bit faster, I believe. I'm not entirely sure if it is as widespread as it used to be during the mad games times, but it is certainly something I still use to this day. It is something I like doing. I think it's pretty cool can be very beneficial, I think. Uh, maybe I'm imagining things, but to me, this is still something I like to do, and I kind of think it's beneficial. However, I'm a bit rusty nowadays, so I am not as good as I used to be with knife spamming. This is definitely not the best you can do. This, like I said at the beginning of the video, in the disclaimer, I'm not a pro by any means, but um, yeah, this is knife spamming. 
So that was one of the first tips. Another one of course why I recommended the tactical is very simple. Like I said earlier, this weapon can shoot for walls and everybody has left now so that's a bit unfortunate. I guess we gotta join in different servers so I can showcase that. Before we do that, let's actually take a look at the gear we bought. We bought the heart balloon and the money bag. So what do you do with them? So let's start with the money bag. So basically this one allows you to jump higher. So while other people can only jump this high, you can do stuff like this. You can jump with the money bag. I just got to get the timing right. There we go. And we can do the same thing again and actually get to the top like this. But of course, if you want to do it the other way, you could also use a heart balloon or you can use a combination of the both of them, which allows you to jump really high as you can see right here. And you can get to places that other people cannot really get to. If you want to see an in-depth video for the money bag jump, feel free to check out the video I've made quite a while ago. Link will be in the description down below. And well, now of course, let's join a new server and let's take a look at some of these tips that you might have just learned. So you now know of the concept of knife spamming and also have learned about the balloon jump and the money back jump. So those are a few things that may help you actually improve that knife ability test. However, there is something I definitely want to mention, which I think is much more important than knife spamming. And it may be kind of common sense to do that, but I still wanted to point it out because I feel like brand new players don't really do that too often. So instead of knife spamming, there's something else that you can do, which is of course switching to your secondary. So this is something a lot of pro players basically or really good players do nowadays instead of knife spamming which some still do of course especially the ones that have played mad games before or have played knife ability tests for a very long time but a lot of them nowadays basically just switch to their secondary if they miss with their main ability or their main weapon they switch to their secondary and most likely secure the kill that way so if you end up missing you can just switch to your secondary just make sure you always have it reloaded and then of course there should be no issue and there you go this is by the way how nice spamming can look like i think it's a little bit faster than if you just regularly throw your knife but i'm not entirely sure about that so don't quote me on that and of course you can sometimes struggle with the accuracy a bit at least i sometimes do but yeah, those are basically some of the tips. I uh, would highly recommend, like I said, to get the balloon and the money back. Those are definitely very useful tools and knife ability tests. Believe it or not, gears can be useful. So before we actually end the video, there's one more thing I want to showcase. And of course, this is going to be one final time how to use the money back and the balloon, of course. So basically, if you want to jump high, you want to use the both of them together, you can use them separately. Basically, when you're at the highest point while jumping, you want to activate the money back. So you basically place the money below you and jump on it and then jump higher. So this is kind of how it works. So you jump and then at the highest point right here, you would actually want to use the money back. There you go. As you can see, that's basically how that works. You can do this very consistently. Sometimes it doesn't work, but of course that's no problem. And then if you want to jump even higher than that, you can start adding the heart balloon. So there you go. Oh, we kind of failed that, bad timing. So if you are at the highest point, and you want to activate the money back so there we go and that's basically how you do that so as you can see while jumping upwards still not falling down we activate the money back and then we can jump higher don't overdo this otherwise you will get reset this is definitely something to keep in mind the game will think you're uh, doing something bad so this is something to keep in mind don't don't spam this if you spam this like when you spam jump you will get reset Anyway, so that's basically going to be it for this video. I hope this was helpful. I hope the tips were helpful to new players. Hopefully you learned something for any experienced players that may have watched this video and that want to add something that I forgot about. Feel free to write a comment down below. I think new players will definitely appreciate the support they can get while learning this game, of course. So yeah, thanks for watching and I will see you, of course, in the next one. Bye, guys.